Six-Day War was a critical juncture in the history of modern-day Israel. We all know that what could have been a devastating defeat turned into a glorious victory. Today, we pay tribute to and we honor the 1,200 South African volunteers that went across to Israel during these desperate times and were part of cementing and securing Israel's future. Two weeks before the war broke out, we got word that they were looking for people to come and take the place of soldiers in Israel, in the kibbutzim. I got into a train and I caught a train, caught two trains, and we arrived back in Johannesburg and uh, I applied at the Zionist Federation. It was just packed, it was actually packed. And out of that they started the um, who could go, who couldn't go. I served in the Israeli army in 1961 and 62 and then went to volunteer in 67. But before I volunteered, I was one of the selectors at the Zionist Federation. We went through thousands of applications and only allowed those that we thought could help Israel, not those who Israel can help. Uh, all the flights were paid by the Zionist Federation and uh, we were, had to sign a contract for six months to stay in Israel. And then once we got to the kibbutz, you know, we went into the fields. I remember having to get up at four o'clock in the morning and we just simply used to go to bed with our work clothes on. So that when the beep beep came, we just grab our boots, go back and sit in the back of the van and fall asleep again. We were sent to a place called Jabalibni, which means white mountain in Arabic. There was no water, no roads, old Arab huts. Uh, the food was atrocious because the water that arrived from Ashkelon was hot when it arrived. The bread by the time it got to us was stale. Uh, the floor, there was no floor, the doors didn't close, the windows were falling out, but that's what we lived in. It was in there, they, that was, they had them, those were the, the accommodations. Some got nicer accommodations, some got less accommodation. The showers were officially opened twice a week with hot water to shower. But we South Africans who are used to showering every day found a window that was open that we used to climb through and shower every day. We did a lot of traveling in the Sinai, which was very interesting. Got as far as the Suez Canal. I jumped into the Suez Canal to go for a swim. Mm -hmm which didn't go down too well with the Israeli army. You should have seen the bras we were given in the army. We used to use the bra for cleaning our rifles. They were so awful. Coming back one day, I saw an abandoned t tank, so I decided, what the hell. Started the tank, drove the tank back to the, um, to the camp, knocked on the major's door and called him out. And what do you want? I said, present me, Drom Africa. There was a madrich there. And they were sending the girls to the kitchen. And when I went in, I said, there is no ways I am going to work in a kitchen. I've served in the army. I'm not doing kitchen work. I want to do a job here. And the madrich said to me, can you use a four-wheeled, a, a big truck? I said, of course I can. Never been in a truck in my life. And they said, who can drive? I said, I'm a driver. They said, you see that tank, move it. I, I, I drove the tank and I flattened the car. I didn't see it, it was in the way. What could I do? I was allowed to do some plowing, number one, which was possibly the most fulfilling experience I've ever had in my life. Because I arrived in the morning and the Sidran of Oda, the man who gave us our work, said, I want you to plow from there and go as far as you can. By the end of the day, the landscape had changed from light gray to dark brown. And, and he came and he just looked and he said, Asita, you've done good work. And I had, I knew I had. It was just an amazing experience. Two days after I got to the kibbutz, to kibbutz Shamir, I was determined to get to the wall. This was just uh, a few days after the wall was taken. So what happened was we got a lift with an army jeep to Jerusalem. We walked through the Dung Gate and there we found the bulldozers had just finished bulldozing all the houses that were built right up to the wall. At about 12 o'clock they allowed us to open and they opened up the, the gates and we were allowed to go right up to the wall and touch the wall. And then the people started pouring in, religious, non-religious. Uh, they started davening and dancing and there was no mechitza. So everybody was mixed and it just went on. It was an unbelievable day because uh, we were able to get to the wall 
where so many people over thousands of years have been wanting to get to the wall and there it was, we got there. When we came in as volunteers, um, they were, the Israelis were very grateful and they were very hospitable. I remember the wonderful people that I met who were so kind to me. People who, who took in strangers into their home and fed them and fed them and fed them and fed them. Uh, the experience changed me in um, that I learned how to stand on my own two feet very quickly. I'm sure I might have been a different person if I had never experienced the army and the Six Day War. I came back after the army and most of my friends I could not communicate with. I had matured in a different way, more, far more independent than them. Coming back was, it was an anticlimax. It was sad. You knew that you just had one of the best periods of your life and it had come to an end. It was, a, it was a bad situation that, that brought it about to go. But if every Jewish kid had have had the experience that I had, they would have had the most marvelous experience. They would have seen the Israelis at their best. I'm happy I went. Thank God I went. And thank God I came back in one piece. If ever we need to, for whatever circumstance happens, Israel is there to catch us like a safety net. And you see how a country can grow so quickly. And it's unbelievable what they've actually done and technology and being a small little country like that is, it's unheard of. Kholakovod to Israel, they have built a first world above a first world country. Hats off to them. Hats off to my, I'm proud to be part of them. Mm -hmm.